Hello everybody, Buddy Web Midland, Texas. Gonna do a little video today and you're gonna find this one real interesting. Uh, I posted it on Facebook a few minutes ago, got a lot of reactions, comments on it. I'm gonna go ahead and read them to you as well. And, uh, and you know, this is gonna answer a lot of questions. Uh, it's, you know, it, it, uh, uh, there's also things that are not answered. Let me just jump right in here. The title of it is First Secret Police John Woodward, okay? And, and so it, in all there were there was 11 secret police that were caught on camera on the night of the uh, a murder attempt on my life and it took six years and a two thousand dollar reward to get identified okay and and a private investigator finally collected the reward uh, empire private investigations in 2018 and and so here let me just start off here it says many things are now known about the home invasion and premeditated capital attempted murder on my life but not all and one of the biggest questions is who was the shooter aka would-be killer there's a dangerous criminal that's out on the loose right now we know that for a fact okay and here's some bullet points i put in here the evidence leaves no doubt that i wasn't shot with my gun so we know that somebody under my home shot me by surprise with my phone lines cut and burglar alarms going off in the attic you know and interestingly uh charles manson and his gang when they went to sharon tate's house they cut the phone lines these killers at my house they took a page out of the charles manson murder the homeowner uh playbook you know that's how dangerous they are they can be i mean they're actually more dangerous than charles manson you know uh, it's just amazing what manson could do if he had rosie rodriguez d helping him you know tamper with evidence and lying police reports you know I mean it's just it's amazing what's going on here we know they cut the phone lines before shooting me there's plenty of proof plenty of videos I do showing the evidence and and it was it was Rosie that that was the confirmation of that the detective you know when she made up the lies we see her planting my, my stolen cell phone on on you know in my bedroom on a camera that tried to disable we know there were 11 police caught on camera that night. It took six years, $2,000 reward to get identified. That should have been a national news story in by itself. First known secret police since Nazi Germany, and they're still loose. We know that Detective Rosie Rodriguez and Officer April Chandler tampered with evidence and falsified police reports. I was just told this week that the Chandler was fired. Okay. We know that I've been reporting repeated burglaries to my home and there was a burglar trapped in my guest bathroom on the day of the murder attempt. We know that Google Maps was showing a large building in my backyard and that multiple people are documented as saying that tunnels and underground homes are here. Million dollar underground homes and actually it's believed that's where the oil show parties were held. One person said they were having pedophile parties under there, recorded on a phone call. And there was a sheriff guy running for sheriff, said that our last sheriff painter used to hang out down there. Another recorded phone call. We know that I crawled out at 10.42 p.m. and that Martin County Sheriff John Woodward and the late Midland Deputy Sheriff Mike Naylor was seen arriving at 11.01 p.m. I live in Midland County. Martin County is another county uh, <coughs> about 30 miles away. And so that's never been explained why the very first you know, law enforcement officer at my house is a sheriff from a whole other county. Okay, we know that Lieutenant Dickey was inside my home at 11:05 without being seen arriving, as was Woodward and Naylor just four minutes earlier. That's how we knew they he was under my house. Also listed at my home and not seen arriving was officers Davis, Chatwell, Angel, and Hale, who was also proven to be under my house. And and, and of course, that you know, there's underground home in the backyard where they're having parties. So here's the question. Why was a sheriff from another county at my home minutes after a premeditated murder attempt without being dispatched? And why was his name illegally omitted from the police report? Was John Woodward the shooter, a.k.a. would-be killer? Okay, somewhere out there we do have a would-be killer. Okay, I'm trying to figure this out. These are screenshots from my security camera when I crawled out there, and, and, and you know, and that's what I stated as a fact. We're going to look at the video here in a minute, and, and it's time stamped at 10.42, so I was shot probably around 10.30 uh, with my phone lines cut by surprise, okay? I was forced to crawl out. I mean, it was live or die at that moment. Okay, and then here, 19 minutes later, we see the first police car arrive, and that's Martin County Sheriff John Woodward with his spotlight on and uh, wasn't dispatched. So how did he know to come to my house minutes after a murder attempt? We're going to talk more about that in a minute. 
This is a news article that was posted online in the Odessa American and shows a picture of John Woodward, that Martin County Sheriff, Martin County Sheriff under fire. And it's real interesting. It was in 2014. It says, we got a call from dispatcher saying John Woodward is up in his office hammered drunk and he's got an inmate with him, a former Martin County Sheriff's deputy said. It's about 8 p.m. March 27, 2013. So that's about a year after the murder attempt on my life. When the former deputy said he received a call from dispatch, he spoke on condition of uh, anonymity. Now a year and a half later, one deputy was fired, another was forced out, and no charges have been filed against the sheriff who's been accused of supplying an inmate with alcohol while having the inmate give him a tattoo. Accusations that could be charged as a third degree felony. This story is coming out as news has become has become public that Woodward has not been in the office for several weeks and intends to resign. And then it will go on, the tattoo that he got was of the Santa Maratta. We're, we're, gonna, we're going to uh, talk about that more. That's the saint of death. It's used by cult members, okay? That that tattoo, I'm going to show you in a minute. Okay, so the first comment, his video was put from my front security cameras, showed me crawling out at 10.42 p.m. on at January 28, 2012. I'm now crippled for life thanks to this violent crime. The 911 call you hear was from the 7-Eleven store a few minutes later. Interestingly, notice how the recording started before 911 answered the phone. Also notice the headlights on my company car are turned off as I'm crawling out as if somebody is sitting in my car, okay? So I'm going to put this in motion and I'm going to hit that. See the lights on my car? They're on. Now they go off. I screamed help and the lights went off. And the other point I was making, listen to the phones ringing, ringing, ringing. It's recording, okay? Now listen to this phone call. In the 911. 911. So the question was asked, how did they start recording the phone call before before they answered the phone? You know, how did they know that the phone call was going to come in and go, "Oh, let's start the recording so we can get it ringing." Do you see how weird that is? Okay, so anyway, timestamp 10:42 p.m. capital murder attempt. Okay. At 11:01, 19 minutes later, my security cameras record Martin County Sheriff John Woodward arriving with the searchlight on and he's followed by the late Midland County Deputy Mike Nader. They were not dispatched and it took six years and a $2,000 reward to get them identified. So how did they know to come to my home? Some people might say it was because they heard it over the radio, but if that was the case, then why did they have the spotlight on? I suspect they were under my home when I was shot and they were looking for my dead body. It's possible that one of them was the shooter, a.k.a. would-be killer. Naylor died in 2014, October 2014, and uh, uh, he was shot with a stolen gun. Here, here, let me do this video here. No, there's no sound on this video. Okay, there's Woodward showing up, spotlight on, followed by Mike Naylor right here, Midland. So Martin County Sheriff... Uh, John Woodward shows up 19 minutes after I crawled out without being dispatched. It took six years and a $2,000 reward to get them identified. 22 minutes after they showed up, my front cameras on my home were disabled. Here's some of the comments. Kayla Hernandez says, this is all around insane. And she's absolutely right. And I said, arrest should have been made a long time ago. She said, no joke. I think I think I, I I think I ever want to get to go to the Midland area. I said, I, and she says, I know it can happen anywhere, but it seems like Midland is super shady. I said, I believe they murdered the guy that lived here before me. And in fact, one guy asked me if I knew the names of the four people that have been murdered and died in my home. They have to be stopped. This is a print screen from Aaron Packerhofer, a local businessman. And he asked me, he said, but if I can ask, there were four people who were murdered, died in your house. What are their names? I didn't know, but obviously he does, right? You know, somebody needs to ask Aaron who the four people were murdered before they tried to murder me. She's like, oh my God, this is crazier. And this gets crazier and crazier. 
Long's not here, but do you think what happened with Haley Dunn happened at your place? Okay, that was that was right off the out of the blue. She asked that. And I answered and I said, no, but there is a connection to my home in Haley Dunn. She's the famous 13-year-old missing murdered child that made national news. On March 14, 2013, I wrote the Department of Justice and I suggested that law enforcement look in the underground homes here for clues about Haley. And two days later, her remains were found in Scurry County. She'd been missing for two years. As soon as I write the, the Department of Justice, they find her in Scurry County. I've now documented 10 people by recording screenshots, etc., saying that Haley was killed in Odessa, and this includes who, where, and how. I suspect that her stripper mom took her to the underground oil show parties two months before she was kidnapped. And I put a link to one of the most recent videos with Sean Atkins framed for the Haley Dunn murder. Sean is, has been indicted for her murder, and, and these people that, you know, that say that she's killed in Odessa never said Sean was there, but they did name who was there. There, and it's a whole bunch of different people all saying the same thing. She's like, oh, wow, where the heck is Billie Jean now? That's the mother of Haley. I said, I don't know where she is or if she's still a stripper, but I was told that she'd been taking Haley to the strip clubs with her around the time Haley went missing, okay? And that was these two screenshots. This Janice Freeman driver says, now, buddy, I heard that Billie was a, from a very reliable source and that Haley was going with her as well, but staying in the dressing room while BD, Billy Dunn, worked the stripper pole. Okay. And then a friend of, of Billy Dunn's the, named Stacy, a hope, hope for Haley Dunn admin, says keep in mind while she was stripping it was a third job because Clint didn't work. That's the dad. She's a nurse. She's doing sexual work and stripping. Okay, So there's two people confirmed that the mother's stripping. One said that she's taking Haley to the strip clubs with her. See, I'm suspecting that all the strippers with the oil show parties and if she's taking her to the strip clubs she took her to the oil show party and i got a feeling the the wealthy businessman and and the police that were at the underground oil show parties don't want anybody to find out that this famous missing murder child was there with them two months 13 year old two months before she went missing kayla's like wow okay that's all side story you know then Kayla's like, do you still live there? I said, surely not. <laughs> and I'm like, the last thing I would do is limp away from my own home with my life ruined. This home proves these killers are still out there breaking into homes and murdering innocent people. It may be your home they come to next. And Kayla's like, oh, Lord, I pray not. It's insane that nothing is being done. I don't know how people can do such things to other people. It blows my dang mind. She says, I'm, gl I'm glad I live on the road. Ha <laughs> ha Okay. And, and I'm trying to keep myself positive, not thinking about all this negative stuff. So, so just let it be, laughing out loud. It's scary stuff, et cetera. Okay. Okay. 13 more comments here. Back to the story of John Woodward. As seen in the above news article, Martin County Sheriff John Woodward was getting drunk with an inmate while getting a Santa Maria tattoo. Remember I said we'd talk about that. That is the holy saint of death which is used by cult members and gangs. He's no longer sheriff of Martin County. Was Woodward the shooter and does he have a fascination about death? Okay, so this is the tattoos of the Saint of Mawarta tattoos. It, it's not recognized by the by the church. It's actually condemned by the church. You know, I mean, it, it's a it's a cult death thing is what it is. But this is the tattoo that that Martin County Sheriff was getting drunk with the inmate and was getting. It was in that news story, you know. And uh, and so then that's question if he has a fascination with death and murder, etc. You know, here's another story. I said, this news article said he was reported by a deputy that worked for him, and it may have been Chance Rayner. Rayner was later arrested by the feds. Rayner's wife smeared my name in the public with lies, so I wondered what their part was in these capital crimes and murders. You know, pretty pretty low life to go smear the name of a crippled crime victim, the guy that's just home minding his own business, a guy that was actually reporting crime to police. You know, that's what I was doing. I was being the good citizen, and they tried to murder me in my home, and now we know there's there's a large group of corrupt police involved. This comes from the Martin uh, County newspaper, whatever, and it says, uh, uh, The strange odyssey of Sheriff John Woodward, who resigned Tuesday evening from his positions, you know. 
and, and it goes on here, involves sheriff drinking with the inmate while in the Martin County Jail. That inmate was, was named in the Odessa story that we seen a minute ago. Was allegedly given Woodward a tattoo during the drinking episode. It says the source for the March 2013 incident was listed by the Odessa article as a former deputy sheriff. That would either be Ashley Bordstad or Chance Rayner. That's where Chance Rayner. Rayner now works with law enforcement in Midland and resigned his position as deputy in Martin County sometime after the 2013 incident. Okay, and then Rayner gets in, ends up getting arrested by the feds. Okay, see see this connection here? It's, it's bizarre. Federal complaint outlines allegations against Midland Police Sergeant involved in April standoff. So there was a couple times he was arrested, and like I said, the fed the feds got involved. And he was, uh, the complaint states that Rainer impersonated a DEA agent at an apartment complex while he allegedly tried to buy drugs and threaten someone. Okay, so this was the guy that worked for Woodward. That was Woodward's deputy, so it was. And his wife, okay, we're going to read this in a minute. R Ch Chance Rainer's wife smears my name in the public with lies when I'm the crippled victim of a premeditated capital tempted murder. This made me wonder if Chance and his wife had a connection to the underground homes, crimes, and murders. There's got to be a reason. You know, it, it uh, harassing the witness of a capital crime is a crime, you know. And, 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 and that's what I am. I'm a victim. I'm a crime victim. And, you know, here's Rhonda Jean Strain Rayner. Uh, the question is, see, her, her Strain looks like a maiden name. I wonder if she wasn't related to Jeffrey Strain, the Texas Rangers that I sent 70 emails to and then just seemed to do nothing at all, you know. Okay. Is she says, oh my gosh, the cops are not crooked. You're crazy and that is all. No one, well no one but that Glossop dude, and he's just as nuts as you are, cares about these outrageous insane claims you make against the police. St please stop these insane ramblings. You need help. Please find a psychologist or a therapist or someone to help you. If you can't afford it, I would be more than willing to get you help. Please stop. Not all these cops are bad. Have you ever thought maybe it's, it's you that is wrong? Why would multiple agencies want to harm you that is nuts? Please stop. Okay? And so you see here she's smearing my name in the public and I'm I'm the uh, you know just a homeowner home minding my own business and these killers broke into my home right and then we have secret police take six years to get identified I said I assure you that I it was that, that this was a real police call from the weekend etc 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 she goes on I've read your rants reviewed the reports and nothing you say matches up the reports that's a lie as for the secret police I see Mr. Glossop's name and uh, several of the uh, and several of the officers so I'm not sure why you keep saying unnamed. As for slander, you are posting officers' photos and accusing them of countless crimes. Some of these officers are good law-abiding, law-upholding citizens that you are accusing of horrible crimes. Now, who is really slandered? I had a $2,000 award and had their pictures six years before they get identified by, before a, by a private investigator. You know, And then she puts a link to schizophrenia, and that was the lie to cover up the premeditated capital murder attempt on my life. It's made up by April Chandler that schizophrenia lie when I was cleared by the hospital because I mean the proof shows I wouldn't shot my gun some killer came to my home and shot me I'm a victim that's what it is and and for some reason Chance Rayner's wife wanted to go in public risk prison time to smear my name okay here's the next one Kayla Hernandez. I don't know how they get away with all of this when you have so much evidence. Isn't that the truth, right? And I said, I don't know either. It's lawlessness. There's nothing else you can call it. Said lawlessness. And then she says, Nancy Grace. That's a famous reporter. I said, I've contacted Nancy Grace and hundreds of other reporters, elected officials, and law enforcement. This is unprecedented. Somebody very powerful is involved in these crimes of rigging private homes to kill and steal. It was about a week and a half ago, I was at the Sheriff's Department talking to Lieutenant Gray, providing him evidence, you know, evidence that you can't deny. So either, you know, once again, Lieutenant Gray's investigating or we got one more dirty cop that's trying to cover up multiple murders. That's all there is to it. It is unprecedented. It's what's going on here. And Kayla's like, sounds like, that's so dang scary. It's like you can't even imagine, you know. I, I mean, the ones that you, uh, you know, I, I'm a lifetime supporter of law enforcement, you know. And, and imagine my surprise when I, when I realized that police were involved in these crimes. 
Here's another guy, Jack Dominguez. He says, I've always been a live and let live person, but there are those because of the, their atrocities against people, children, and crimes against humanity. I'd stick in a wood chipper, feet first, setting slow. This is far from the world I thought would be 45 years ago. And, I, you know, I understand what he's saying. He's upset. I said, I was home and minding my own business when this gang of killers chose to load their guns and come here to kill me. And I now believe now believe that I was just the next guy after the last one, you know. And she, he, he says, this reminds me of what you said as a video, Dr. John. I, I, didn't, I didn't listen to it. I didn't have time. Here's another factoid about John Woodward. He was married to former News West 9 anchor Devin Sanchez. In 2013, I reported a sighting for Eric Perez who was wanted for capital attempted murder because I thought I saw him across the street changing vehicles. I wondered if Eric Perez is the one that had shot me. He had shot at Martin County deputies that worked for John Woodward. You see the connection? This means he tried to murder cops. But notice how all of the charges went away and he was only charged with evading arrest. Devin Sanchez did the exclusive news story of why you don't run from police, but never mentioned why you don't try to murder cops that work for my husband. You know, weirdest thing you've ever seen in the world, right here. Officers arrest fugitive duo. This is Eric Perez right here. Like I said, I have a police report where I, where I, I thought I saw him across the street changing vehicles, okay, while he was on the run for capital attempted murder firing a gun at Martin County Sheriff deputies. Normally, trying to kill cops is frowned upon. You know, I mean, but the weirdest thing here, and then he's finally arrested here, okay, and uh, and here's, the, here's Eric Perez, man on the run for a week, speaks out, exclusive Devin Sanchez news story. Here's why you don't want to run from police, and all them charges of trying to murder cops that worked for her husband, and didn't even mention it. They just went away, magically went away. Weirdest thing. Kayla's like, wow, no words, you know? And, and, you know, I'm like, John Woodward later pled guilty to assault charges. It's my belief that if John Woodward wasn't the would-be killer, then he knows who he is. What do y'all think? And I'm asking the public there, you know? And this is another news article. This is, uh, you know, later on, he's no longer sheriff, and he's arrested for assault for, his, uh, I guess, his girlfriend or something. And, and you know, it's a felony, and then he ends up pleading guilty, so he doesn't do any jail time, you know? He, he, gets, a, he gets a sweet deal that was in 2019, you know? And uh, and then and then somebody's tagged. So I just thought y'all would find that interested that the very first police officer to show up at my house, Martin County Sheriff John Woodward, you know, and you know that seemed maybe have the infatuation with death and Santa Marta and and all that. And and so uh, so anyways, uh, uh, let me know what you think. This buddy way of Midland, Texas. All what we do know is somewhere out there is a would-be killer that breaks into homes, cut phone lines, and murders innocent people. And I bet they murdered the guy that lived here before me. They murdered that little girl at the whole show party and they murdered more people. Talk to y'all later.